let's talk about the insurrection at the Capitol. This happened on Wednesday, right? Two days ago. Um, what an insane thing. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't help but laugh because it's so fucking crazy that that happened. And I... Uh, <laughs> I was in there and uh, and watching this. Um, I definitely will. I definitely will check it out. Uh, in Independent Left, I yeah. I I have to know when when you guys are going. Hopefully, it notifies me when you guys go live. I've noticed that even when Ron goes live, Ron Placone goes live, it doesn't really notify me on YouTube. So I will have to keep an eye out to um to to uh to check out your live streams. Um. I would not stand on your neck. Oh, I, I I get what you're saying, Holly. You wouldn't stand on your neck just because you know me. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a valid reason. Absolutely not. I don't think it's a valid reason. Uh, but let's talk about this insurrection at the Capitol. What a fucking insane thing to happen, isn't it? Like I I didn't think. I will say this. I'm not surprised that this happened, but uh, I am also. I didn't think that it would happen. But I'm not surprised it happened. Does that make sense? Like when I saw it happening, I was like, "Well, of course, this is the natural order of things for the for the last, you know, five or six years. Like th this has been boiling up, and you have a demagogue that basically validates all of these people's feelings. So, well, of course, right? They basically swarmed to to protest, protest in quotes here, air quotes here." Uh, the Biden presidency that, that they're they're claiming that the oh the election was stolen it's stolen right so Trump did his own little Russia gate there uh, without really any proof he just said a bunch of buzzwords they repeated those buzzwords and uh, and then he was like hey go to the Capitol you know protest this thing um, and that and so they did uh they the the cops knew i mean everybody knew that this was going to happen and there was a couple thousand of them that showed up and there was minimal cops kenosha the national guard will get sent to if you are um if you're at a protest to make sure that you know politicians vote on health care a bunch of cops will show up if you're there for a climate change protest a bunch of cops will show up if you're protesting a pipeline uh, you know, you'll get sound cannons and water cannons used against you. But if you're a bunch of Trumpers and a bunch of militiamen and white supremacists, you get the minimum spread of cops and they're like, hey, just uh, maybe don't be a dick. All right. The cops let them in. I want to show you guys that video because the cops let them in. I want to make sure the volume is up to the max. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys can hear this one again. I apologize for the technical issues, but here we go. Uh, this is the video where the cops literally let them in, right? They literally just let them through is what this person said. Here we go. They're just letting them in. And they just reached the Capitol again. They just let them walk in. I've heard the excuses, right? Oh, well, there were too many of them. And what choice did the cops have? I don't know. Call the National Guard. Isn't that what the National Guard is fucking there for? Isn't that what they're supposed to do? But no, they're too busy shooting rubber bullets and tear gas at black people saying that they don't want to be murdered by the fucking police. In fact, the National Guard was denied. They denied the National Guard. They said, we don't need them. Throughout this whole thing, they were breaking windows. Somebody carried a pipe bomb into the fucking Capitol building. 
they're putting their feet up on on the you know the uh on the senate floor and the desk at the senate floor they're rummaging through a bunch of i don't know what they were fucking looking for right like were they looking for these little slips and they were like ah, i got them the, 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 here's the certificate that says biden's president scratch trump <laughs> like what the fuck were they looking for and yeah, what was going on was very ceremonial, which brings into question of like, if it's just ceremonial and it doesn't actually have any sort of impact, why the fuck do we keep doing it? Tradition, who cares? It's stupid. Windows got broken. They were, you know, bringing in assault rifles and guns and b busting up a bunch of shit. Isn't that isn't that what uh, Black Lives Matter protesters were chastised for? Isn't that what they were chastised for? They're they're they did it. They're breaking windows. On a government building, on a building that, you know, everybody's like, this is sacred ground. If it's that sacred, why are your law, why is law enforcement not doing shit? It took them like three and a half hours to do something about it. Three and a half hours. The second somebody pulls out a water bottle at a Black Lives Matter protest, the tear gas gets lobbed. The rubber bullets start. The sound cannons show up. They shove an old man down and let him bleed out on the concrete. Three hours that these fucking white supremacists, racists, and desperate people with guns and pipe bombs and weapons and Trump flags and a, for some reason, a Viking outfit busted into a government building that they claim is sacred ground and they didn't do anything. Huh? And the cops let them in and they allowed them to commit their at random acts of violence. Now, the, you know, the, Fucking senators and representatives all ran and they went to an undisclosed location, which is probably like underground tunnels or some shit. What more evidence do we need of a racist, racist criminal justice system? Why would we trust a criminal justice system like this? Right. It's a joke whenever uh, Judge Barrister in the UK was like, oh, Julian Assange will will get the fairest of all trials. Fuck, are you kidding? We can't get fair trials for are citizens that have a tan. And you're going to claim that he's going to get a fair trial after he revealed American war crimes? The fuck out of here. How much more evidence do we need? Does this not help people realize what the defund the police movement has been talking about? Not just that, but... They didn't call the National Guard into it. Does this not show you the racial bias of, of the American empire? You could have stopped that in less than an hour if the National Guard showed up. What's the excuse for using tear gas against Black Lives Matter protesters? Oh, that's right. There's a lot of them, and they need crowd dispersion. There's a lot of them. Where was the crowd dispersion? There is no excuse that can be made to now say that we have a racist criminal justice system and that the police officers are racist, they are part of a racist system, and any justification to that is just defending racism. There's not. Majority white crowd. I might have seen two black people that might have been a part of the Capitol riots. And those were riots, by the way. Everything else were protests that were escalated by cops.
the last two days I've been thinking about this, right? And I and I know I posted a video um uh, last night about um uh, my thoughts on this, but I want I want to reiterate it for for you guys that are watching, and you know if you guys have comments, you can. This is this is this can sometimes can be a little contentious, and, and I'm not justifying anybody's behaviors. I'm identifying where their behaviors might come from. Like, why would someone choose to do this? Right? What what causes somebody? Um. What causes somebody to take up arms and rush into a government building because their their favorite mascot of quote unquote democracy isn't picked? Right? What causes somebody to do that? These are desperate people. I think that's who Trump reached out to. And some of them are more desperate than others. Some of them are more violent than others in their desperation, right? These are people that were forgotten. They were overlooked. Um, we're looking at a world that's constantly changing. Looking at a world that's constantly changing. More people that didn't have rights before are getting the rights that they've deserved. That's what the fight for equality is all about, right? And they have, like I mentioned earlier in the stream, is they have been highly propagandized to believe that if a particular minority group of people, whether it's black people, brown people, women, LGBTQ, so on and so forth, do gain their rights, there is less rights for these white people that have lived in luxury and lived in privilege for a long time, generations. Even even poor white Americans are taught to believe that the reason why they don't have the things uh, of luxury is because of black people. The, there's that's why there's a disparity that causes racist you know sentiments. They're desperate not to be forgotten. They just want to know that they matter. So they're so they're now making themselves matter by doing things like this. None of what they think is true, though. It is it is lies, propagandas, and falsehoods to keep them fighting us and keep each other f fighting each other, right? Like instead of taking on the system. And, you know, doing things like changing your fucking voter registration or, or denouncing a, an entire party that is not giving a fuck about you. Trump heard them. That's all he did. That's all they he just listened to them and then he made it about himself. That's what narcissists do is that they say, oh, these people seem to have a problem. What if I say I'm the one that can solve them? They will put all of their faith and trust in me and it gives me power over them. And that's what he did. That's what he did in 2015 and 2016. We all watched it fucking happen. And he, and and here we are, right? The things escalated from there. The question I would have for these people is, has Trump helped you? And I think you will hear the same excuse that liberals give me when I chastise obama and bring up his record well he did the best he could with that opposition weirdly enough though trump did get a bunch of crazy shit through even though he had an op oppositional uh congress these people are are just desperate people right i brought this up to a friend of mine, uh, uh, Jay. Actually, you guys, you guys saw him, right? Uh, Jay and I have this conversation quite often. My my goal is I'm not agreeing with what they did. I think what they did was fucking terrible and and illogical and and realistically stupid. Um, and they staged this insurrection, this coup of of sorts uh, at the Capitol. And you know, can we talk to them? Can we rationalize them? I don't know. I, in in that moment, you probably can't, right? But Let's try to identify why these people chose to do what they did. Why do they why do they choose to believe in demagogues? Why do they follow these these quote unquote charismatic leaders? Because they listen to them. That's all they need to do, and they have their allegiance completely. 
because he's different from those that came before him. He's not. Donald Trump is the abject representation of capitalism. He's old, saggy, bloated, and thinks that he's the best thing in the world. That's capitalism. It's old, saggy, and bloated and thinks it's the best thing in the world, even though it's not. Obviously, you can reach some better than others. It's not a foolproof idea. I'm, I, I will admit that. But identifying the source of of um, why these people choose to do this, why, why do they choose, you know, the desperation that they must feel, then figure out how to fix it. Right? I mean, if you would have given people a UBI over the last nine months, um, if you would have canceled rent and canceled debt over the course of the last nine months, uh, you would have probably seen a populace that wouldn't do shit like this. There might have been some. All you all you need for a UBI, let's say this was a plan, right? The plan was we have a ravaging voracious virus going across the globe and Americans need help. Can't go do a lot of jobs right now because those jobs will spread the virus. Okay? Well, people got to socially distance, wear masks, do all the things that we've been doing. Well, what if the government decided $2,000 a month till the end of this thing was what we were guaranteed? And they did that. People weren't in a desperate financial situation like they are now, right? I think some people would have still looked at the election and been like, oh, it's stolen or whatever, but they would have stayed at home. Because financially, they're somewhat secured. They're pacified enough that they wouldn't have gone out and rioted at the Capitol. But they didn't. In capitalism, in the way that the system runs, there is no financial incentive to be a good person. The financial incentive is to become better than everybody else. Again, Trump represents all of this. These people are desperate because Trump, being the representative of all of this, said that he would help all these desperate people. I, I I do I disagree with everything that they did, but I I feel bad that they've been duped so bad. Right? Like they got taken for a ride. And then what happened? Trump came came out and made I I, I honestly think this the strangest fucking statement I've ever seen from a president. He still claimed the election was a fraud. And he just and then he said, we all know this, but it's time to go home. I love you. I think you're very special, but it's time to go home. I love you. The end. The fact that he said the election was still a fraud shows me that he is terrified of his base. He tells them to go home in hopes that they will listen to him. And he tells them that they're special because he then needs to revalidate them. And he tells them that he loves them so that he they don't come and kill him. I don't think Trump really realized who he was galvanizing and who he was giving a platform and voice to. Um, I think he made a foolish decision. People like Ted Cruz, they do this shit too. They need the desperate. They need the people that are hanging on you know, and, and they're about to do something over the top and crazy. And and then they pull them in. And then when they don't deliver, they go, well, it's the other side's fault. They shift the blame over to Democrats. If you had three or four parties in, a, 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 in, a, uh, in our electoral system, there would be less likelihood of this happening, too. If ranked choice voting was a thing, maybe they wouldn't feel so desperate that their voices aren't going to be heard anymore because that's part of the problem is that now that Trump is leaving, they no longer have a voice or or it seems like that's how they would feel, right? They don't have this representation of somebody that is looking out for them, that is trying to be the best for them. They don't have that anymore. 
So they're trying to secure that. That's why this happened. Again, this is this is the actions of of very desperate people. I think Trump's statement was a little bit of a, a proof of that. The way that he's like, who, what leader says I love you to his followers? What? Um, it was strange. It was very, very strange. So, you know, again, they eventually left. Some of the people made excuses, right? They, even that statement split the crowd where they were like, no, we're being tested. Some of the Q people said they were being tested. A bunch of other people were like, he said we should go home. Let's just go home. Three hours later, they used tear gas to disperse the crowd. They arrested 15 people. I mean, how many people do they kettle when it comes to Black Lives Matter protests or, or protests about health care? Any anti-establishment, anti-war protests have more people arrested and thrown into prison for just being anti-war and anti-establishment. And then what did the conversation become? It didn't become about the racial inequalities in this country. It didn't become about the uh, 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 this vast you know, inequality that remains in this country. It became about impeach Trump, which would have been the dumbest idea of all time. He has two weeks left to go. I, I think maybe less than that now. And you want to impeach him. Look, these people swarmed the Capitol when he lost. What do you think they're going to do when he's impeached two weeks before he's going to leave office? Do you think they're going to go peacefully? And based on what just happened here, do you really think that the cops and the military or the National Guard are really going to do anything another time? No. The reason why they are doing anything now is because they want to deviate the conversation away from the fact that there is massive race, racial divide in this country and it has been manufactured by those in power. Impeachment would definitely be a reason for them to get more violent, and it is the dumbest idea that anybody could have come up with. You know what would have been a good idea? Trying to approve those $2,000 checks like Joe Biden promised would happen. Let's let's start working on that. Oh, how about a, a floor vote on Medicare for All now that the, the Democrats have both the House and the Senate? Let's make that happen. What are the excuses there? Nothing. It became about the, like it always does, like it always does. It only became about the fact that none of these people are Trump. And because he's Trump, we got to get rid of him. I don't like the fucking guy. I don't, but I think this is a stupid idea. Leave well enough alone. Do the investigation. There you go. Find that fucking guy that did the pipe bomb. Find out why those cops let these people in. There's a reason why this happened. The DC Metro Police and the Capitol Police are the ones to blame there. So this morning he conceded. I want to play that video. I think it's like a two minute video, and I want to. Uh, I'll, I'll probably pause and try to talk about it a little bit. Uh, whoops, forgot to share the screen. Okay, so this is our video here. So this is uh, Trump delivers concession speech and says new administration will be inaugurated January twentieth. Here we go. I'd like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence lawlessness and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. Wait, so he says that he, he called in the National Guard when that was the big deal, that the National Guard was not going to be called in. So immediately, like, he's still lying and rewriting history and pretending like he was like, I tried to do the best there was, guys. I tried to do, but it's what, pff, hey, you saw what happened. It was crazy. It was crazy. It never even showed up. Anyway, all right, let's keep going. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. 
and to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election and emotions are high, but now tempers must be cooled and calm restored. We must get on with the business of America. My campaign... I think it's interesting, a couple things in that little statement that he just put out there. Um, one is that uh, he basically called out his supporters to be criminals and that they're going to be prosecuted, which is which is an interesting statement from someone like Trump, um, especially someone that is so much like like I said, I think I do genuinely think that he's fucking terrified of his his base. So I'm very I'm curious to know why he would make a statement like this, because but the Q people, I, the Q and on people, I think are probably going to go and say like, oh, well, this is deep, deep state. He's testing us, blah, blah, blah. But he said business of America. And it's how he's been running the nation, right? He's been running it like a business. He hasn't really been running it like a fucking country should be running. He's running it like he's running a fucking. But again, that's how capitalism looks at things like a business, like something to earn money, like something, uh, uh, you know, uh, that that you can gain in capital with and shit. All right, let's keep going. Vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. In so doing, I was fighting to defend American democracy. I continue to strongly believe that we must reform our election laws to verify the identity and eligibility of all voters and to ensure faith and confidence in all future elections. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. A lot of interesting stuff in there. A lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, he... Uh, he said his journey, the journey is is not over. It's just beginning, right? What a weirdly ominous statement there. Uh, it's uh, I, I've been saying this for the last couple months, which is I don't think he's going to be done in politics. I don't think this is the last of us seeing Donald Trump. Um, I think Donald Trump is probably going to either start his own network with people like from the blaze and uh former fox news folks and maybe even alex jones or something some sh some fucking crazy shit like that or he will get a recurring segment on one or all one or all of the corporate main uh, uh corporate media outlets cnn msnbc fox news the reason i say that is because uh who profited the most out of the trump administration These corporate media outlets. They're one of the reasons why he got elected. How much coverage did they give him during the during his run? I mean, infinite. Les Moonves of CBS came, uh, made a statement, you know, basically saying that he's good for business. He's bad for the country, but he's good for CBS. He's not going away. He's still talking to them. He called some of them criminals, right? And he's like, bam. But to my supporters, I know you're disappointed, but don't worry. 
there's probably a plan in place to to get him on television during the Biden administration to undermine everything that Joe Biden is doing, which is like, hey, man, don't take our shtick away from us. Like the progressives are already going to fucking point out the shitty job that Biden is doing. And then liberals are going to be like, eh, no, don't do that. That's not the time to criticize Democrats. As they usually do. This is uh, this is wild that he and he, I mean he's not going to attend the inauguration, but th- I mean we kind of figured that right, like we kind of figured that this dude wasn't going to show up to the inauguration of Joe Biden. Um, I mean, and the, and why would you, right? Like they're both at at odds with the only defense that Joe Biden has is that he's not specifically Donald Trump. He is not specifically that one individual. His DNA is clearly very different from uh, uh, Donald Trump's, and that's all that matters. This uh, insurrection at the Capitol is is wild and crazy, and, uh, you know, we should... It was concerning and shitty. I don't know what else to say about it, but I think what we should be doing now is trying to identify the reasons why someone like Donald Trump got elected and then do the opposite of what got him elected. That should be the primary focus. What got him elected is um, years and years and decades of neoliberalism and neo- neocon ideologies. Um, That's that's really what got him elected. And if we're not willing to step away from those ideologies, we're going to see more disenfranchised people, more racial divides, more economic divides, and more propaganda and more people being controlled by that propaganda. So now would be the time that if you are someone that believes in the Democratic Party to veer away from it, because that is a corporate party of neoliberalism that led to Donald Trump. I mean, so here's the thing, right? What's done is done at this point. Joe Biden is going to be elected. And Joe Biden was part of the administration that eventually led to Donald Trump. And then we just took a step to get to that point again, which means that there is now an opportunity for the next four years for some another right-wing populist posing as a man for the people to come back up if we continue to choose to make the same mistakes that we did before. That's why I said at the top of this live stream, get your change your registration from Democrat to independent or green or whatever else. Or non-affiliated. That's what I changed mine to. I said not affiliated with any party. That's where I stand. We'll see what happens in a year and a half or so when another election is going to come back up. But right now, I don't want to be fucking affiliated with anybody. Um, And I think that's fine. But if you really want to show these people that what they're doing is not acceptable, change your registrations and start looking at alternative parties, support them, amplify them, look at, you know, what virtual town halls they're doing read their newsletters do do whatever it is and then focus on your community too right like so if there's some stuff that you can do in your community to help out if you if there's shit that you can do in your in your uh in your own neighborhoods to help help each other out uh do that don't give to some large charity give to a mutual aid in your in your communities they are more helpful than any corporate charity you'll see. Don't support candidates that take corporate money. Yeah, I advocate for the People's Party. Nick Brand has been on my show a bunch of times. I've, t- I've extensively talked about what the People Party stands for. Look into them. Support them. Join them. W- figure out a way for you to play a role and them becoming a new major party in the United States. So at least we have three major parties. If the Green Party is your bag, 
figure out how you can fucking get them to be a major party in the United States. If the liberty, same thing with liberty, figure it out. There's information out there. There's like-minded people out there. Connect with them. Don't chastise progressives for it. Criticize your leadership. Look, if there's somebody within the People's Party that goes, yeah, I think Medicare for All is a thing, but now is not the time. I think everybody in the People's Party is going to be like, whoa, 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 what the fuck did you say? You're nah, no, you, you're, you're, we were here at your support. Like we were right here at your support. You're now here. This insurrection at the Capitol didn't need to happen, but it did. And there were things in play that made that stuff happen. And if we aren't going to identify those things, if we aren't going to identify the reason why a demagogue like Donald Trump got elected because of a propagandistic media, because of neoliberalism, because of neoconservatism, that a neo-fascist got into uh, into, in, uh, into power in the United States, then we're going to repeat that again. We're going to get another four years of neoliberalism and then some other fucking right-wing populist is going to show up and that's it. That's the end. It's just going to be this cycle over and over again. And every time we get to the top of that cycle, which is when that neo-fascist just gets elected things will be economically and racially worse and worse and worse this is the beginnings of how you make a failed state and we're repeating that cycle again so if you don't want america to be a failed state stop supporting the duopoly that got us to this point i think that's where we're going to end things uh let's look at some let's look at some comments uh, unbelievable that there are no charges for the Chica cop that shot Jacob Blake. Yeah. Um, equally unbelievable that the National Guard wasn't called into uh, <laughs> the Capitol. He can't run in president in four years if he's impeached. Uh, yeah, let's let's. I don't think he's going to. I don't. He didn't want the job to begin with. Uh, I think he wants to be a television personality, and that's primarily what he was hoping. He was hoping that his numbers would get boosted so that. Uh, the Apprentice would get picked up for another season from NBC. Uh, or if he dies in prison, very unlikely that he will get prosecuted for anything. Joe Biden has even come out and said that he will not be spending time trying to put uh, Donald Trump in prison. Why would he? They, they Realistically, they're buddies. They're more alike than different. The browser I am using is Opera. Uh, Independent Left asked me what browser I was using there. Uh, and Trump has already got partial ownership of the OANN. Oh, okay. Okay. I did not know that he had ownership of OANN, which means that he can just kind of take that and run with it and create his own network out of that. Uh, if he rebrands it Trump TV or something like that, um, you know, I, that, that's a very, very real possibility. Uh, Scotland said he's not welcome to visit his own golf course during the inauguration. That's fine. Florida will let him in. <laughs> The penis of America will let uh, Donald Trump enter it. You guys do what you will with that phrase. Uh, I'm in the People's Party Slack channel. Yeah, I'm um, I'm connected with a couple people in the Pittsburgh area uh, for the People's Party. Um, so I am actually probably should figure out how to get invited to that Slack channel. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do more. I know like right now things are a little bit chaotic. Uh, with us move, shifting things around and getting out of the holidays and, and dramatics and all that sort of stuff. But once that's settled, like I'm, I'm planning on trying to do more with the people's party. I'd like to do more with the people's party. Um, it's the only thing that kind of gives me hope on an electoral politics level. So, um, look into this stuff. The, the, this stuff is going to repeat if we keep allowing people like the demo, like a party, like the Democrats to take control a party like the Republicans to take control. They don't give a shit about people. They never have and they never will. That's the reality of it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.